Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our series entitled Above the Noise. You know, last week, we talked about how we can hear God through godly counsel. Matter of fact, this past weekend at church, we began another way that God speaks to us, and that is through dreams and visions. Today, in this small group, I wanna focus in on the second part, not the dream part necessarily, but the visions. I wanna talk to you about how God wants to speak to us through visions. I am so excited to jump right in to our small group. By the way, I also have my small group with me. Can we just welcome all those that are with us? Come on now. Yeah. Let me begin by asking you a question. Have you ever seen a picture in your mind or in your heart and not know quite what to do with it? In other words, there's this picture in your mind, this mental picture in your mind or in your heart, and you're not quite sure what it is. Well, listen, I know that I have. What if God was speaking to you? In other words, what if God was using the way that he designed you mentally and God was actually breathing and painting that picture in your mind? What if that was God? How can we know if it's God? How can we know if something in our mind is not just some figment of our imagination or God Almighty speaking right to us, cutting right through the noise, right through all the social media, right through all the distractions, right through all of life's disappointments. What if it's God's voice speaking to you? You know, in our study today, let's start by asking the question, what is a vision? I wanna just define that up front. What is a vision? A vision, a biblical vision. And that's what I wanna talk about. A biblical vision is seeing a God-given picture of your future in your mind and in your heart. In other words, God breathes his dream. God breathes his vision. God breathes a picture in our mind and in our heart of a preferable future. It was interesting in, in the New Testament, there was a story. Again, I love the apostle Peter. You guys love Peter? I love him because he says it. He says stuff just whatever, there's a thin line between what he's thinking and what he's saying. Maturity is not saying everything you think. But anyway, God really used his life. Matter of fact, he was the first preacher in the New Testament church. The day of Pentecost, God raised him up and he became that preacher, it's powerful. God gave him a vision. Remember what a vision is. Vision is a mental picture of a preferable future. Somewhere God wants you to go, something God wants you to do, something God wants you to achieve and become. So God gives Peter this picture. Now I gotta be honest, it's a little bit of a freaky picture, but it was there was detail attached to it because it's where he wanted to bring him. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 11 to 14, listen to what it says. Peter saw heaven open. So he's got this open vision and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and it's let down to the earth. Now watch what God's point is. This is so powerful and it descends down to earth. And in that picture were all kinds of four-footed animals on the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came from him. And here's what it said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, Lord, why? Because in that picture, there were some animals that the Bible had deemed previous to this unclean. So now the Bible's, now this voice is telling him, to eat of this or to kill and to eat. And in Peter, as a Jewish man, he's got this picture and go, wait, time out, time out. You're wanting me to do something, but I'm not supposed to do this based upon my, my, my Old Testament understanding of what was clean and unclean. So God gives him this picture and the picture is to rise, kill and eat. This was a dramatic shift and God was speaking to him. He was speaking to him about doing something. And then God begins to give him the interpretation. Peter, you're not called to bring the gospel just to Jewish people. Peter, what you previously deemed unclean and clean, time out. Those, quote, people that are non-Jews, they're not unclean anymore. They actually can become clean because of my gospel, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of what I've done in my son dying on the cross, which you guys as Jews previously deemed unclean. No, 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 they're not unclean. They're actually clean now. So how do we know if a vision is from God? Because we all, listen, I think crazy things all the time, right? How do I know? 
Well, we see here that Peter's vision did not begin in his own heart, but it originated from God. See, there are huge differences between a man-made vision and a God-given vision. Let me give you just a few. A man-made vision is, is often based upon our gifts and skills, but a God-given vision is, rele- is received as a revelation from God. You hear people all the time talking about, you need a vision, you need a dream. Nothing wrong with that. But what is the origination point? Does it begin with God giving it to us or is it our own assessment of what, quote, we think we're good at? Hey, I can do this based upon my skills. Well, what about what does God want? Let me give you some benefits of receiving a God-given vision because I believe that God gave me a vision and I'm walking in today what was God's heart for my life. Three benefits of a godly vision. Number one, vision motivates us to action. Godly visions cause you to act. When you receive, my friend, a vision from God, That's where some of you guys are right now. You feel like, man, pastor, my life has been so lethargic. I don't feel like it's going anywhere. And I say this respectfully, you need a fresh vision from God. Because when you get a vision from God, it causes you to get up, to go up and to move forward. That's what happened with Peter in Acts chapter 10. He saw this vision of the gospel going to the Gentiles. So he stepped out. Number one, vision motivates us to action. Let me give you number two. The second benefit, I believe, of having God-given vision is visions give you clear-cut boundaries in life. Let me explain. Godly visions help us to prioritize life. It helps us to say no to some things, and it helps us to say yes to other things. No to things that we don't need to do, and yes to what we need to say yes to. If God shows you that you're called to be an accountant, then you don't need to pursue a professional baseball career. If God speaks to you to be a teacher, then you don't need to go to nursing school. In other words, the earlier that we can receive a vision from God, the less time we waste. Uh, And that's why we need to put that in the heart of our kids, right? Let's believe God. God will speak to you. God will give you a picture of the future. We don't need to, listen, we don't need to wait. I was 19 and I saw a picture from God when God, actually 20 years old. I get saved at 19, gave my heart to Christ, but at 20, I I, I knew in my heart that God had spoke and God had given me a picture of my future. It, it helps us to prioritize when we hear from God. Number three, the third thing is visions empower us through tough times. Listen, when you have God's vision in your life, when you're walking in it, whether it's in your business, your family, as a single person, listen, a married, whatever it is, when you are gripped by God's vision, you have an objectivity to your life, clarity, perseverance. Look, you have purpose that allows you to walk through adversity. Maybe you're in a marriage that's just tough right now. And maybe you feel like, man, I just feel like giving up. But if you'll stay in prayer, it could be that the Lord will breathe upon you and give you that, that, that confidence to hang in there. Could be. That picture that'll compel you to keep walking. Maybe you're dealing with a child. Listen, my mom prayed for me and prayed for me and prayed for me. God save my son, save my son. Lord, it was a lot, it was I went all the way through high school, junior high. I was not an angel. <laughs> but God gave my mom a vision. You know the Apostle Paul? Sometimes we think about the Apostle Paul, and you know he wrote two-thirds in the New Testament, which is amazing. Do you know that he wrote many of those letters while he was in a prison? I want you to think about that. If, if we went to prison, what would we do? I mean, I mean, we could get self-pity, cry. What was it that caused Paul? What was it that caused him? I've said this before at church. He was the original, he was the ultimate Terminator. You remember the movie? You couldn't kill him, right? I mean, he would just get up. Paul, Paul was somebody who was compelled by God's vision to move forward, to see the world touch for Christ. Here's what Paul said. In Acts chapter 26, here's the key. Here's why he didn't give up. Here it is. He said, matter of fact, he was talking to King Agrippa. And of course, he was starting to go through his trials and he appealed to Rome. And and so he's going through all these trials and and King Agrippa is saying, you know, basically, you know, what's up with you? How are you still, you know? And here's what he said in Acts chapter 26, verse 19. He says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He was on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter nine. And the Bible says he was knocked to the ground and God spoke to him that he was gonna declare the gospel before kings and and rulers and Gentiles and Jews. And so, so he had this picture. And that's why every time, every time in his mind, when he would get weary and he wanted to give up, he kept going, why? Because he had a heavenly vision. He had a vision. God visions come from heaven. (laughs) 
all right? God puts them in the heart of a man, in the heart of a woman, and then it's our responsibility to run with that. I mean, let me just hear from some of you guys. What what has a God vision done in your life? Have you ever received one from God? How has it impacted your life? How did you know that was God speaking to you? Anybody? Anybody ever say that, Pastor, I've received something from God? Yes, sir. Tell us about a God vision in your life and, and what difference it made in your life. Hey, Pastor Tell Steve, my name is Ryan. And a few years ago, I was in prayer one day. And one of the biggest challenges for me in my walk with God has been, you know, I know stuff at a head level, but the heart level, sometimes it takes a while to get there. And so God revealed to me that I really struggled with the concept of believing that, that He loves me. Wow. And so He just showed me that in prayer one day. And he wanted me to surrender that lie to him. And so I did, and this has never happened to me before, but all of a sudden I saw myself, I think I was having a vision and I was in this big banquet hall and there was a table as long as I could see. And there was all these people at the table who were really important. And then there was this man and I couldn't see his face, but he had this big beard. And I, I believe it was, it was a representation of God. And in this vision, I was wearing these really dirty clothes and I was a little boy. Wow. And God said, do you want me to replace those clothes with something else? And I said, yes. Wow. And he took the clothes off of me. And this is how I know it wasn't for me because what he put on me was, he put on me, uh, he put on me these, you know, like growing up as a little kid, when you take a bath right. and it was like a little um, towel with the little animal hoods on it. Right, the hood. And it was a-, a I had lamb. one of those. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a, a, of a lamb. And he put it on me and then all of a sudden I was in the arms of somebody on this, on this big chair and I felt this deep love that I've never felt before. And after it ended, I feel like God told me the, the, the key was that he, I could come back to this place anytime. Wow. So that's been a big challenge, but it was such an important milestone in my life in believing that God loves me, you know, and he cares for me. So. And you know something that's so cool, Ryan, that you said that, you know, when you get a vision of God's love for you, that is the foundation of any level of confidence in our life. Anybody else, maybe two or three more. Yes, ma'am. Tell us your name and tell us when God's vision, when you receive something from God and how it impacted your life. Uh, I'm Elizabeth. Um, Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. So uh, a few years back, my husband, who uh, is an uh, educator, he's actually a principal now, but then he was a teacher and he had one teacher of the year. And we were like, that's amazing, right? Well, the very next year, they were letting go of anyone who hadn't been there for like, more than five years, maybe. And so we're like, okay. So he doesn't have his job anymore. You know, lost his job. Wait a minute, time out. So he was the teacher of the year. Yes, and and got let go. Wow. Yeah, right? (laughs) Wow. Yeah, but it was anyone who hadn't been there longer than a certain amount of time got got let go, regardless (laughs) if they were teacher of the year or not, didn't matter, right? Anywho, so he gets this new job. It wasn't a place that he was as passionate about. We're like, okay, Lord, like this is where we are. Well, you know, a little while later, we're sitting in a church sermon and afterwards, I turned to him. I was like, Brand, I feel like we're supposed to adopt a child. And he was like, I feel like the same thing. And that sermon had nothing to do with adoption, fostering, nothing. So we're like, okay, cool, we'll, per- we'll pursue that. So we go through the foster classes, whatever. One day we get a call and they're like, hey, we've got this kid that we really would like to know if you would be willing to foster. And we're like, okay. And I was like, well, how, you know, what's his name? They're like, well, we can't tell you that yet, but he's a fifth grader. I was like, oh, my husband's a fifth grade teacher. I was like, you know, where is he in the city? And they're like, well, you know, he's on the west side. I was like, my husband teaches on the west side. I was like, what school is he at? They're like, oh, and they named the name of the school. And I was like, okay. Uh, so then they finally told me his name later. Lo and behold, out of the 20,000 kids in foster care, the kid was in his class that year at the new school that we wow. couldn't figure out why wow. he was there. I know. Lo and behold, I mean, God made it like red flashing lights. Like, so this that is was your the child. new school. That so was he new was school. a new school. New school that we didn't know why we were there. 20,000 kids. God was like, here's your son. Here he is. And that was, I mean, it was so powerful and so amazing. Wow. I think especially because like, as time went on, he adopted him when he was older. He was a fifth grader and he really struggled. And for us, like it gave us so much clarity because like God was like, this is your son. And no matter what you got to walk through with him, this is your kid. And I made it obvious and so like it was just like thank you lord like so i got one question (laughs) did you help him with homework (laughs) (laughs) that is a powerful story man that's good can we just give it up for that couple 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe maybe one or one or two more. Anybody? Yes, sir. Hey, Pastor. My name is Chris. Hey, Chris. Um, it was a time shortly after my wife was diagnosed with cancer. You know, I was 27 years old, never been through a medical situation before, did not know what to do. And, you know, and for a man, you know, every man, every husband wants to protect their wife, you know, so I was just kind of freaking out like, man, God, I don't, what do I need to do? And I remember sitting on the back porch at one time, praying, asking God, you know, what to do. And he gave me a vision. And in the vision, my wife and I were in, in the middle of this vast army. And it was like arrows were being shot, but there was an army of people with shields holding up, blocking us from the arrows. And shortly after I had that vision, it seemed like everywhere that I would go, I would walk in a movie theater, you know, to go, just go see a movie. And then all of a sudden, the person behind the counter would start crying. Wow. And she said, I just want to let you know that I've been praying for you. I know you don't know me, but me and my wife have been praying for you. And even today, you know, uh, there was a person that came up to me and said, you know, I know you don't know me. This one sound weird. I hope I don't freak you out. But man, I've been praying for you guys for the past several months. So just from that vision, it gave me the hope and the encouragement I needed to endure a hardship. Yeah. Chris, what I so respect about you, of course, I know some of your life and you know what's, what's happened is that God gave you a picture. Here's the thing, even before you walked into it, and he surrounded you with some people. Does that make sense? He surrounded you with some people. And it was, and then I think of the back to the Apostle Paul and what happened with the Apostle Paul. God gives him this big call and yet there's teams and there's people that were praying for him. And, and, uh, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing. The key is, are we spiritually sensitive to enough to be able to discern if it's a God dream, if it's a God vision? And that's the key. And then if we walk in it and we step out, there's no telling what can happen. Let me just give you, before we close, just a couple practical things about dreams and visions. When you have a vision from God, okay? Number one, and this is important for us, okay? Number one, Test your vision against the scripture. If you have a vision and you think God may be speaking to you through this, but somehow it contradicts the word of God in any way, it's not from God. God does not speak to you intuitively to contradict his revealed word. God, God doesn't do that. God's visions never contradict God's words. The scripture, the Bible is the plumb line in which we gauge the visions that we believe that God has given us, all right? So that's important. Number two, submit that vision in your heart to godly counsel. Share it with a godly friend, godly friend, all right? And when I find them, in other words, I'm gonna submit, I'll, I'll, then I'll submit those inner things in my heart to somebody that has the spiritual maturity to be able to handle that. Does that make sense? So let's make it practical with our one thing this week before we close. I want you to do something that you may have never done before, pray, Listen, and if you'll open your heart, you may very well receive a vision from God. And God wants to speak to you. And let me tell you, it'll cause you to persevere. It'll cause you to overcome. Write it down. Habakkuk chapter two says, write the vision, make it plain. Perhaps you've had a vision and you've never communicated it with anyone. This week, I'm asking you to find a trusted friend. It might be your small group leader or maybe the person that brought you there and share it with them and ask them to pray with you about that. So as we conclude today, I want you to remember this. You can never, you listen, you can live above the noise. Whatever God has put in your heart, if it's from God, it'll cause you to live above the noise and to push aside the distractions. You can hear the voice of God. God wants to speak to you. He loves you. He cares about you. And he has a beautiful plan for your life. Take some time to really dig into these ideas in your small group. Discuss them with your group. Pray for one another. I'm gonna be praying for you, and I'll see you next week. God bless.